بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وإذ تأذن ربك ليبعثن عليهم إلى يوم القيامة من يسومهم سوء العذاب إن ربك لسريع العقاب وإنه لغفور رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى تلف في سورة الإسراء And when your Lord proclaimed that he would send forth against the Jews until the day of resurrection, those who would afflict them with evil chastisement. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the Jews. That he would punish them with people until the day of judgment. Surely your Lord is swift in retribution and surely he is all forgiving, all merciful. This is from Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also said that abasement shall be pitched on the Jews wherever they are found except when they are in a bond from Allah and a bond from the people and they have incurred the anger from Allah and poverty shall be pitched on them the Jews are always in a state of abasement unless somebody props them up and that's why only when the British propped them up they were able to come to the Palestine and only when the Americans propped them up they're able to stay there but it is Allah's divine decree that whoever supports the Jew will get the punishment which is given to the Jew. And that's why when the British supported the Jews and established them in the lands of the Muslims, Allah struck the British with what? Poverty and abasement. And so therefore that uh, empire, which they said the sun would never set upon, was reduced to these islands and their nose is bloody by a bunch of gangs from Northern Ireland unable to do something. And the poverty which you see now in the United Kingdom, I think all of you probably see and sense it and maybe taste it even. I mean, you can see how this uh, city, right, of London, which was the jewel of the world maybe a hundred years ago, uh, it looks like almost a state of disrepair. This is Allah's divine punishment for them supporting the Jews. And likewise, what is happening to America now from its poverty and its problems is part of Allah's divine punishment because the Americans supported the Jews. Because Allah in His Quran says that He will strike the Jews with humiliation and abasement and poverty. And so whoever supports them gets it. And when these Arab leaders support the Jews and sit in these peace conferences with them, Allah will strike them as He has struck them and will continue to strike them with abasement and poverty. And what is happening to America is a result of that. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Isra that when the time came for the second promise came to pass, we sent against you our servants to discountenance you, meaning to disfigure you, and to enter in the temple as their previous people entered it the first time, and to destroy you utterly that you, what you ascended to. Your Lord may well have mercy upon you, but if you return for a third time, we shall punish you too. And this is what happened. The Jews were in the temple, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them when they became disobedient with the Babylonian pagan king. And when the Jews were again brought back out of captivity, when Cyrus, the the Persian king, took them out of captivity and took them from Babylon and put them back into Palestine, when they disbelieved into Jesus, alayhi salam, Allah struck them with the Roman pagans. At that time the Romans were idol worshippers. They had to become Christians. And they built the temples. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, But if you return, we will return. Now they have returned. Are they obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are they believing in, in His Prophet? Do they believe in Jesus now? Do they believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do they apply the laws of the Torah or the Quran? No. So then Allah's punishment will come to them again. However, this time the punishment will be the final punishment. Because it will be as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said, the last hour will not be established till you fight the Jews. The Jews will flee and hide behind stones and trees, and on that day the stone and tree will speak, O Muslim, O Abdullah, O worshiper of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. And likewise, the Prophet ﷺ has said in a hadith reported by Imam Ahmed, even though the scholars have differed concerning this hadith, some weakening it and some saying that the Senate is Hassan. That the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever remains of you from this Ummah will fight the Jews at the Jordan River. You will be 
on its east bank and they on their west. And even this hadith is ba'if, we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us from a front hadith in Sahih Muslim and elsewhere that the Muslims, when they final, fight the final battle, it will be Jesus will come to them in Damascus. And that, the, that Jesus السلام, will kill a Dajjal at the gates of Lod or Lud in Arabic, which is a city in Israel today, not so far from Jerusalem. So, you know, even if this hadith in Imam Ahmed that we will be on the east bank of the river and the Jews on the west bank of the river is considered to be weak, as some scholars argue, or other scholars say it's Hassan, the other hadith, which are affirmed, indicate that the battle will be there. So this hadith in itself is not going to a thing. And so therefore part of Allah's promise to us is that the Messiah will return amongst us. And that he will kill the king of the Jews, the Dajjal, the Antichrist, at the gates of Lod in Palestine as I mentioned. And that he will break the cross and eradicate the swine and abolish the jizya. There will be no alternative for the Christians but to become Muslims on that day or die by the sword and at the hands of Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. And those Muslims with him. And you know why? This is a freaking punishment for the Christians. Because the Christians, for 1500 years, have been putting the Muslim to the sword, or for 1400 years, but putting the Muslims to the sword in the name of Jesus. And so now they're put to the sword by Jesus' sword himself. And this is how Allah's divine retribution comes to them. Because always the punishment is going to come according to the type of sin. This is a divine law. Also among the promises is that the appearance of the Mahdi alayhi salam at the end of time who will lead the Muslims in the battle against the Christians and then Asa will come and pursue the battle against the Jews. So this land of the Middle East is unlike what the summit for the peacemakers and the New World Order says is going to be a land of peace. It's not. It's going to be a land of tribulation and warfare and bloodshed until the Day of Judgment. Because only when the Christians are eradicated and the Jews are eradicated from the face of the earth will the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, come and there will be no more war on the earth. And the blessings of these hadith I've spoken about elsewhere and it's, I wish I had time to mention uh, but because uh, there's not much time left. However, we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us, O oh, you who believe, Ya amanu, whoever of you turns in apostasy from his religion, Know that in his stead Allah will bring a people whom he loves and who love him. Humble towards the believers, stern towards the disbelievers, men who wage jihad in the path of Allah, not fearing to be censured by anyone who censures them. If we forsake jihad at this time, the ummah denies jihad and says that this is no longer because of international law or peace, we will become apostates from our religion. And Allah will bring forth a people who will fight jihad against the Jews and the Christians. And so therefore, it is only for our own salvation that we should uh, return to this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, said in the Quran, Surah Nur, Allah has promised such of you as believe and do righteous deeds that he will surely cause them to succeed the present rulers in earth. Uh, likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, uh, for we have written in the scripture, uh, after the remembrance, that the earth shall be the inheritance of my righteous servants. This means, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, the inheritance of Muhammad sallallahu and his community. And the Prophet sallallahu has said that the mulk, the kingdom, the dominions of his ummah will reach wherever day and night reach. The Islam will come and the Sharia will rule wherever day and night reach. There will come a day when London will be ruled by the Sharia, whether the Christians like that or not. If there is something called London in those days, if there is a city which is inhabited at that time, wherever day and night reach, the Sharia will rule. And of course day and night reaches here as it does throughout the earth.